Now, I did have the title for the next session, but it's gone out of my brain right now because I left my sheet. But I think it's Jesus' heart for to make him known. And we have a great person that is going to be sharing with us today. Um, I probably know him the least out of everybody in this room, but I'm going to introduce him to you. Pastor Ian. He'll be the kindest man. Yeah, probably. But you know, what I have seen about Pastor Ian is that he loves people and he loves Jesus. And even more than that, he knows that the Father loves him. And so out of that comes his heart to others. And um, I had this verse when I was praying for you this week, and it just says, pray also for me or for you that whenever you speak, words may be given to you so that you'll fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which you're an ambassador, hopefully not in chains, but um, pray that you may declare it fearlessly as you should. And as I was praying just before, Ian, I saw um, a picture of you holding a basket and you were handing the basket, uh, you were handing bread out to people and as you were giving out bread, more bread was appearing and I felt like that's the word for you as you go um, into your next step that you're going to be giving from that fresh bread. Yeah, so... Let's put it together for him, hey? Good to hear. Please give me a second. I just did something to my computer, and uh, it's under C for CFC. Here it is. There it is. Go. Yes. Ah. Well, okay. Um, I'm just going to jump into this. 5.05, what time am I supposed to finish? <laughs> Sometime before 6, okay. And I noticed down in the schedule that you got me for a Q&A, so uh, I'm going to give plenty of time for Q&A. So think about that beforehand. I'm going to give you plenty of time, and if you've got no questions, well, we'll have an early minute. Um, uh, sorry, I don't have any PowerPoints, and um, so if you want to take notes, you can. Where I'm going to go to is the how-tos, re-proclamation and demonstration in public and private spaces. Like, I mean, there you go, I should be able to do that in about five minutes. Um, but uh, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'll start off with uh, some background things that you might not ex think is important but will be critical. Uh, I want to talk about just putting it into practice and I want to talk about some how-tos. So I'm going to have like those three basic um, uh, like categories. Okay, so just let me just jump in straight away. Um, if you've got any questions, then just quickly write it down. Here we go. So background. So I've, I'm going to give you four points for background. The first one is worship. People do not realise what this is all about. They think, how do I step into signs and wonders? How do I affect public pro proclamation with demonstration of the power of God and everything? Um, and they just don't realise that it actually starts with you and your personal relationship with God. And in fact, it does never moves away from there. That is the essential. The gospel was never intended to be lived by people who did not have a first-hand encounter with God. It was never intended to be proclaimed by people who, had not, who were not burning with the encounter with God. So it starts with Acts chapter 2, but it doesn't end there. That's just where it starts. I'm talking to you as leaders and I know what it's like to be a leader. You are thinking in terms of your church. You're thinking about expanding your influence. And church leaders are all about influence. And God is not interested in your influence. He wants your intimacy. So he wants you to be naked before him. And it's got nothing to do with outcomes. He is not looking at goals. He wants you. And he wants all of you. And it will cost you everything to have him. But you'll give it up so willingly because you'll have him. 
And, and if nothing happens in your ministry, if no, there is no outcome, then that for you, is, that becomes secondary. It's not what it's about. It's about the encounter with Abba, with Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit. So that's my very first one, is that it's about worship. If you are not a personal worshipper, then I almost don't want to talk to you for the rest of this time because you're going to end up with principles. You're going to miss the heart of what I'm saying to you. I don't want to give you principles. It, we, we do it all the time. We, we reduce the Christian life to be principles, that if we just follow these principles then this will be the outcome in our life. And the principles will all be amazing and fantastic and beautiful and true, but we will have missed the heart of what they were about and we will end up with religion, not with encounter. And so we have to stay in the place of worship. I grew up in, in, in the world that basically, you know, I just figured there were, that different people interact with God in different ways. I was the teacher you know, and like the worship time at church, and I understand worship is much bigger than what happens on the platform on Sunday, okay? Um, the singing was just never my deal. I, let's just get to the chase. This. Let's just get to, like if, if we didn't have the, I just figured as a pastor that it was important to have a worship time in the church because that's how some people plug into God. And I didn't realise what I didn't realise and that is that there was something profound happening there that was I was missing because I had the wrong paradigm and I didn't realise that God was after my naked vulnerable self and, and worship was what it was all about um, and not just on a Sunday like I mean during the week there should always be a soundtrack going on in the background of your mind. There should always be a soundtrack happening. Um, second point I want to make uh, as background, so you probably didn't expect that, you know, the how-tos is going to start with you need to worship and you need to forget about the how-tos. You just need to worship. Okay, the next one is it's all about love. You know, I'm, once again, I'm talking to the converted here. You understand 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the chapter on love, has got nothing to do with marriage. It is the favourite marriage passage. Love is patient, love is kind, you know. It is all in the context of spiritual gifts. It's all in terms of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in signs and wonders. And so it's all about love then. So if you don't love people then forget it, don't even start because you'll just become abusive with the power of God and, you know, you know, God in his mercy and grace is likely to even show up but it's not what his heart was. His heart was that it's all about love. So rather than just coming in and I've made mistakes, okay, where I've just like been so full on, prophetic that it's just like I just can't stop I'm just seeing prophetic words over everybody and I've just got to get so excited and I'm just like and I'm just dumping them on people and I remember just racing up to one person and just like wow this, this is what God is saying to you and just freaked her out she wasn't a Christian and I freaked her out what was what I was saying was actually correct but it freaked her out and frightened her Fortunately, she was bold enough, a young woman, that she could look at me in the eye and say, you are frightening me. And as soon as she did that, it was like a slap on the face. This is not about spiritual gifts and the manifestation and the how-tos. This is about someone who needs an encounter with God and I'm going to be the conduit for it and God loves her. He thinks the world of her and for her in that particular time, she was far from him. He is really, really concerned for her and that this goes really well. So it's about love. Okay, so there's next, next little bit. 
Um, these are just the background stuff, okay? These are not the how-tos, this is the why-tos. And, and the next one is faith. I'm sorry, you can't get away from the school of faith. You would like to think that it's going to get easier. As I said before, God will demand everything of you. He doesn't want your 10%. He wants your everything. He doesn't just want your devotion. He wants you. He wants your relationships. He wants your time. He wants your devotion. He wants like everything. It will cost you everything to have be in the place that he is desiring of you. And I'm just here to let you know that the gospel is not cheap. It's easy. I mean, it's like, it, it's easy to step into it, but it's not cheap. You know, um, I heard someone put it this way. He said, the gospel is, he actually would have corrected me on what I just said. He said, the gospel is not, sim- is not easy. It is simple, but it's not, si- but it's not easy. And... Uh, so the, the school of faith, I don't know how, to, how, how you get around it. Like, um, I don't know if, if I, I, I'd, I kind of think that the way we present ourselves is that we're all wired differently and some are, are built for the radical step and others aren't. And, you know, I actually don't know that that's true. Um, um, I think we should challenge that. Um, do you remember, have you ever seen the little tiny kids? Uh, we've had them in our church, little tiny kids. And, the, and they're up and there's a platform. We've, in our current building, we've got a platform about this high, you know. And, uh, and so these little tiny tackers who are just big enough to walk will climb up on the stairs and then they'll just run at here and they'll just run and... Like, you've got to keep your eyes about you because they will jump. And, and, like, they all do it. The ones who feel safe do it. The ones who've got a father or a mother who loves them and cares about them, they do it. And even the ones that are timid, I've discovered this because I'm not sort of like the person that you, that you want around your little tiny kids because I hype them up. Um, because I actually want them to jump. Come on, you can do it, like, you know, and I will be standing out here. Like, you know, just, I went to a conference once, and because I'm like that in our church, one of the worship, one, one of the worship girls, she would have been about 18 at the time. Um, so some of you know Dave and, and uh, Carolyn, Carolyn Dennis, uh, their daughter, Um, who's probably about this high and built like a rake. And she just saw me there and she's just like, and I'm I'm just looking at her and she's just like, and she jumped. Like, you got to catch her. It's just like, so I kind of feel like everybody is actually built for the life of faith. And we 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 have people because of bad experience, because they haven't had loving support and structures and systems around them where they feel safe and they're not safe. And so they build up all these... Ex- I can, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, yeah? All I'm saying to you is, you're going to have to jump. How do I know if God's going to heal them? Yeah. You'll find out when you do it. But how do I know it's a word from God? Yeah, that's right. You'll find out after you say it. And maybe even then you won't because they're just as likely to say, yeah, does that make any sense to you? No. <laughs> and then they're going away just thinking, man, what, that guy just ruined my life. Just, you know, okay. So uh, one of the things I, I learned from Pastor Bill is, I don't know where you got it from, Bill, if it was a Leo Harrisism or whatever, you can't graduate from the school of, of faith and so you got to jump my advice to you is just don't think about it jump don't wait till till you see if you've got your parachute on jump 
Find out on the way in the air if you've got your parachute on. My saying is this, it's going to be spectacular one way or the other. <laughs> this is going to be a spectacular flop or a spectacular miracle and it's not going to be anything in the middle. Okay, final thing on this first little bit of background is be you. You have to be you. Okay, you can't be me and I can't be somebody else. You've got, to, you've got to be comfortable in your own skin. God wants you to be you, okay? You are wonderfully and beautifully and amazingly made. You've got a Father in heaven who thought about you before you were even born. He thinks you're amazing. You, like, he doesn't want you to be somebody else. He wants you to be you. Now, I don't want to say that in a way that gives you an excuse to be mediocre. Okay? Because if you carry the image of God, you are not, mediocrity is not for you. We've got a culture that tries to pull everyone down so that they don't excel. That is not who we are. We carry the image of Almighty God and everything he does is amazing and on display. Okay, so that's who you are. So be you, but be a real you. Be an authentic you. Okay, be a daring and a challenged you. And, but here's the thing. If you make some mistakes, guess what? You're just you. Awesome. I have done some of the most spectacular flops. I have spat on blind eyes and not seen them open. I have. I even told them that they're going to have to go and wash after I do it. Because that's what Jesus said. <laughs> Didn't work. But I've seen some stunning things. Okay? That is Book of Acts stuff. Okay. That was background. Here's what you're after for your notes. Second point is practice. Okay? And in practice, I've got four sub points. Here you go, just helping you. Under practice, I've got this, church gatherings. Like, like this is, I really love the topic because it was proclamation and demonstration in public and private settings. Church is the private bit, okay? Like I, I, one of the hardest things that I find to break through with people is that we get to practice this in safe environments when we come together as believers. And yet believers don't realise that they can do that on, a, on, on, on our public gatherings. So this is what happens. Second point under church gatherings is why are you waiting for permission? What is it about our culture that forever needs permission to fly? We're seeking, we're waiting for the senior pastor. If you are a senior leader here in this room, the, 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 your team, the congregation are all waiting for permission to step out in the, in the school of faith and where did they get that from? Like we need to unteach that with people because we're a body. The bo we all carry something in the body. So why, why are we waiting for permission? You know, just like I, I say this to churches that have their prayer ministry team. I love having churches that have prayer ministry team. But what about the rest of the people? Well, okay, so then here's the third little bit under this practice. Why do you think it only works in the ministry time? What is it about the way we've created what we call church? What, what is it about that that has taught people that church equals an hour and a half on Sunday? What is that? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Therefore, if church equals an hour and a half on Sunday, then ministry equals what happens by the team on Sunday. 
So what happens if I'm not on the team? Well, I don't have an environment to learn or to practice. What makes me think that I can't come along to a church gathering? It could be a Sunday. It could be a midweek thing. It could be a prayer meeting. It could be anything. Just gathering together with people who I know and love, who are family with me. What is stopping me from asking God for a prophetic word for somebody? I don't have to be the pastor to do that. What's stopping me from exploring what this looks like? What if we had a culture in our church where everything is open? That, that the ministry on a Sunday is important, but that's kind of like a, a, a display of what happens all the time everywhere. You know, it's just like, what if it really looked like that? What, what would it look like if I went to my small group, my life group or whatever it is that you call it uh, in your churches, what would it look like if I went to my small group and I noticed that somebody came in that I know and love and I noticed that they're hobbling? What would stop me from saying the obvious question that would be the question of love, what's wrong? What's, wrong? what's happened to your, to, your, to your ankle? Just like, oh, I twisted it. Just like, has anyone, has anyone offered to pray for you? Like, what would just stop us from stepping out? Why are we waiting for the leader to do that? Like, we're in a, we're in a culture that is forever looking for permission. And I'm just telling you that that's, that's, it just, you don't need to. You don't need permission. I'm going to, I, I go around the, I go around the, pretty well around the world now, just giving people permission to get it wrong. Go on, get out there. Go and pray for the sick and they don't get better. Go and have a wrong word of knowledge for somebody. Go and have a, a, a prophetic word that wasn't true. Just look, like, cause you, just have a shot. Because you'd be surprised how God shows up when you're just stepping out in that kind of world. My final one on this one is to daydream. So... Uh, you don't realise how much I daydream. Like, I daydream all the time. I imagine myself leading the mall to Christ. I imagine myself casting out a demon outside of Macca's. I imagine myself going into the hospital, into, uh, into the, the chronic wards, I imagine myself going up to somebody and, and, and talking to them. I'm, I daydream it all. I, like, I just daydream myself just doing crazy things. I daydream uh, walking down the street and seeing a random person and, and, just, and, and sharing the gospel with them. I daydream what that might look like. I, day, I daydream how I might actually approach her. I daydream uh, what words I might use. You know, it's just like, I, in my daydreaming, because I've, I've, I've hung around with a number of evangelists, then I start daydreaming some of the things that I've noticed them doing. Oh, excuse me, ma'am, I just noticed that uh, your, your arm's all bandaged there. Like, like, what happened to you? Oh, like I really hurt. It's just like, you'd be surprised how open people are to talk about their pains. And... and, and, and and then they will just say something really, really simple. Like, has anyone ever, have any of your friends offered to pray for you? Like, it's either a yes or no answer. <laughs> would you like me to pray? I'd love to do that. I really would. It'd only take me 10, 15 seconds. I don't want to embarrass you in front of people. But I would love to pray for you for that. Would, I, would you mind if I did that? Like, if it's about love, so, but of course, I'll just practice how to do that. I'm practicing it in my daydream. So I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm putting myself in the position. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'll use you as the illustration, like how would I pray for you if I only gave myself 10 seconds to do it in? So, okay, if I've only given 10 seconds, just like, so I just like, you know, I'd say, I'll tell you what I, what, I, what, what, I, what I used to do a lot is I would go to YouTube. YouTube is amazing what's on YouTube, just go and, go and YouTube, put on, the, on your YouTube search uh, street evangelists 
praying for the sick or street evangelists leading people to Christ. You, you just do that and you see what comes up. And, and so I've been, I've been on, now, like honestly, some of those guys are, are crazy. They're like, they're really weird. Um, I'm really glad that they're weird. I would never do this myself. I would never go out on the street with my camera and actually have somebody filming this engagement. I've got, actually, I don't like that. For me personally, that found, feels really crass and, and I, don't, I actually don't like the fact that it's on film because this is too holy. Um, but I do love the fact that I've been on the street with some of these people who have done that. So I do love that. So I'm not saying that it's all bad and evil. Um, and the best ones that I've ever seen who do it, they actually don't have the camera on you. They have the camera on me. You know, and, and, and what's more, some of those guys, I've been on the street with Todd White. Now, I don't know what you think of Todd White. It's like he's just like weird and out there and dreadlocks and, you know, and like just... But I tell you what, when he's out on the street, you've never been with somebody who loves people more. And you, and, you, and you just learn language from them about how to go up to somebody and talk to them. It's just, you know, but, um, so, but you've got to understand, while I'm daydreaming healing you, I go to my small group and you come in with your arm bandaged. But I've been daydreaming her so now I'm bold enough to step out because I'm just, I'm just, I'm encouraging myself in the Lord. Don't underestimate daydreaming. Because I daydream so much, the truth is I can't go down Hornsby Mall now. I cannot go down there without seeing people. Like even if I don't talk to anybody, I'm daydreaming. Like I'm just putting myself in the position where one day I become that person who really has got no inner inhibitions and is just quite free to just come up to somebody and say, hey, excuse me, man. I was like, like um, this is probably going to sound a little bit weird to you, but I was just walking down, the, down here and God highlighted you to me. Like, has anybody shared the gospel with you? You would be surprised how many people will say, no, well, that doesn't surprise you. Would you like me to? It'll only take me two minutes. You would be surprised how many people in Australia, I, in the 1980s when I became a Christian, it was the, the talk of the town was Australians aren't interested. If that was ever true, I'm not sure it was, but if that ever was true, it's not true today. It's just that we're just, like, I mean, it's, but I would, and I've done that but I've only done it because I've already done it 50 times walking past that person that I did notice and just thinking, oh, I couldn't do it. You know, just like, Jesus, no, you know. But I'm just, in my head, I'm just rehearsing. So what would I have said? Um, daydream, day, just telling you, don't underestimate the power of just seeing yourself in that position. And then when you start to see it, in a church service, a, a small group, like a Christian gathering. Don't wait for permission. Don't wait for the ministry time. It doesn't have to happen in the service itself. Okay? So, you know, if I was talking to Seton people, I would be saying, don't wait till Pastor Bill calls people forward for ministry. And, but he's only going to have the prayer ministry team there. So you just sit there and be respectful. That's fine. Go and catch them after the service when they're having a coffee. If any of them that you saw went hobbling out there or whatever it was, or you see somebody out there that you felt drawn to, and I, I would catch them on the way out. Hey, I just noticed that um, you went forward for prayer. Like, did you get what you received? Like, like, did you get what you went out there for? Oh, no, it was like it was really good, but like I went out for, for such and such and I'm, I'm, you know, nothing really has happened. W would you mind if I had to pray for you? Like, I, I'd do the whole thing. It'll only take me 10 seconds. Like, because why does it have to be this big, long, spiritual thing? Okay, third point, the how-tos. In this one, I have six points. Righto? This is good, yeah? I hope this is good. 
how-tos. Public and private. Proclamation with demonstration. First one, get a partner. I'll tell you what. If you... If you... If I'm, if I'm like with Dan, and I'm just like, Dan, let's go down to West Lakes and see what Jesus is going to do. We've, I've just jumped out of, the, out of the plane, and I don't know that my parachute's on. He's going to say yes to me, because he's not going to be so unspiritual and say, no, I would never do that. So he's just like, yeah, okay. So now we're both there together. And we're going to encourage each other. Um, so don't underestimate partnering with somebody. You know what? Just be really careful with that one. Um, uh, if, uh, if I was... Let, 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 me, uh, let me use this as the example. I'll, I'll, I'll use you, okay? Now, let's just pretend that he's not married to you, all right? Just like, okay? So if I was going down the street and I'm, and I'm with Tim and we've, we're just going to see what Jesus does and we notice something about you, um, you know, one, I'll tell you what, we are not going to come and talk to you because that's kind of like, it's just, it's weird, okay? But if you and I had partnered together and we noticed you, this is no longer weird, okay? So if you and I were partnered together and we noticed him, that's not weird. Okay, so you just, you remember what I said? It's about love, you know? If I'm with you and we notice that actually, you know, it's, you, you've got a knee brace on or something, but maybe you got like hot pants on or something like that. I'm not going to lay hands on you, okay? That's just, that's, that, 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 that just wouldn't be right, would it? Um, but I'll tell you what, why, does it, why do you have to have rules? So why can't she lay hands on herself? Just put your hand on where it's really sore. And, uh, and my friend here, she prays for people and God does freaky miracles through them. You know, and so and she'll only she'll only take ten seconds. Like so I just threw you out of the plane. <laughs> so partner with a friend. That's really, really good. If because if, if you just think, you know what? I'm gonna go down to Westlake Small and you're on your own, because then that's gonna be safe. I know, just you know, and, and just like, oh man, it is so frightening. To go on your own. But when I'm down there, if I'm there with, with, with Dan, I'm just like, it is still just as frightening, but now I'm going to actually do it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. And when you see God show up in that place, you're going to walk away and you're going to think, why didn't we do this yesterday? Why are we just always waiting for perfect, perfect weather? Second how-tos, ask permission. I always ask permission for everything. I ask permission in people, for people in the church. Um, I've, I've learnt that. You know, just like, I don't know, they got their knee, they got, they got their ankles strapped up. Would you mind if I laid hands on, on you? And this might actually be someone in the church that I'm the pastor of and this will be someone who's on my team, Okay. And if it was you and you're on my team, I'm still going to ask you, would you mind if I just, if like, if I'm going to, I always will ask permission. I will always be thinking about how this feels for you. I will, all, if, if your husband is there beside you, I said, would you mind if I, if I lay hands on your knee? And you're just like, you're just like, I said, would that be okay with you? I'm going to ask you. In fact, I'm likely to get you to lay hands on her. Yeah. And so, you know, um, and because it's like it doesn't have to be me. It's just, it's, I also will c be concerned because I care about her reputation. Guess what? I care about mine too. So I'm, I'm interested in what you guys, uh, what this looks like. Because if this looks like 
the freaky, weird old guy who's just touching the girls, like which sometimes it can look like that, then I'll tell you what, then, you know, and, and so like, but we have to learn these things. I, but here's the thing, you will make mistakes. I've made mistakes in all of those things. Um, where it, I've made mistakes where it's looked wrong. It's not wrong, but it's looked wrong. And I wished that people would do what I do in my leadership. If I, if I see, like, I'll, I'll pick someone safe. If, if I saw Norm ministering to a, a woman, which could happen, and if it just looked wrong, like, it's just like, maybe it's like it's right over there and it's, there's just something that doesn't look really correct, then you know what I'll do? I'll, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be over there, right? So what I'll do is I'll find someone on my team. It doesn't have to be on my team, just somebody that I trust, okay? I'll say, Rebecca, I said, can you see what's going on over there? So I'm standing in a way that you can easily see, and I'm, stand, I'm doing this in a way that no one can... I'm not saying, can you see that? Just like, okay. So I'm just like, can you just see over there? And you're just like, yeah. And I says, I just don't know what to think about it. Would you like to just go over there and be there? So you just go over, and there, there it is. And now all of a sudden, it doesn't look wrong. And it's all fine. And you, you just, okay. So, but asking permission is always the thing. I just feel like I've got a word for you. Would you mind if I give you that? Just like, well, just the way that you came to attention with that, I think I'm going to have a word for you. <laughs> yeah. Because you have always been... You've grown up in a world that says that you can't shine outside of other people shining. But you were meant to be like the daisy that raised its head, like the sunflower that raised his head above the crowd. Okay? You were built for that. And you, all your life you felt like there's more for me, that, but you've always felt like I can't... Sh- I can't because you have this inner world conflict, this inner dialogue that is always saying, it's not about you. And it's just like, it's always trying to put you in your place. There was a book written by, ah, who was it? It was one of the wives of one of the people. Um, um, <laughs> not, nice, nice girls don't change the world. Lynn Hybels, nice girls don't change the world. That would be a book for you to read, I think. Um, God never called you to be a nice girl. Okay, he called you. You you are not the princess. Okay, you're the warrior princess. You're not up there in your tower waiting for him to rescue you. Sorry. And if you actually feel like that you're the knight in shining armor, that is not what God created you to be. You were meant to. You were meant to run into war together, side by side. So you're not on his back. Like, you don't get to, to go where he goes because you just happen to be attached, okay? You come in your own right. Was that encouraging? Did it make sense to you? Okay. Third little point is be quick. Be quick. Don't think about it. The more you think about it, the, you're not going to do it. Okay. Just be quick. Don't try and figure out how are you going to go up to that person and share with them before you actually go up to them and share with them? That was for the daydreaming. Now, this is it. Just go straight up there. Excuse me, mate. Okay, as soon as I say excuse me, it's just like it is now on for young and old. And it's just like, and I will, I will say excuse me and I don't know what I'm going to say. Okay? Sorry. I'll tell you what. It's a lot of fun. If you love the person, then it's going to go fine. Bring the gospel in as much as you can. Always look for a way to bring the gospel in. You know, um, you, you pray for somebody, um, you know, just they've, 
you've seen them down the street, you know, you've, you've felt that to pray for them or maybe it's a neighbour that you find out they're going through a crisis at work or something like that, you know, just because it doesn't have to be the stranger, the perfect stranger. You know lots of people who are far from Christ already. So just, you know, just go out of your way to make the ask. And, and um, but I find, I, I found for me that I need to, it's kind of like you pray for someone, you'll see a miracle, and it's just like you are riding high. Like it is so, so absolutely awesome, and that's amazing. But you just, I'm just here to tell you that that's just your first steps, you know, because you want to bring the gospel in. You always want to bring the gospel in, and it's really easy to do it. If God, if God answered the prayer, and it's just like, wow, like really be excited for them. I'm usually more excited that they got healed than they are. Like, really? Like, seriously? That is amazing. You know, God really loves you. He just did that to show you. Like, you feel like... And then you just start to have this little, tiny, tiny little 30-second, 60-second thing where you're explaining the gospel to them, you know? And, and if, they're, if, if they're really responding into that, then you're daydreaming about how you take it to that next step of like, you know, just clenching the deal. I, I remember, I remember, because um, uh, I, I, I love the whole prophetic space where, um, where, where uh, you know, prophecy, you'll see pictures like a sunflower up above the rest, you know. So prophecy is very symbolic, isn't it? Um, so because I'm kind of wired that way, I just love tattoos because I just look for the, pictures I don't look for the sunflower I look for things that it's speaking to me about that may have nothing to do with the sunflower you know it's just like and and so I would just go straight up and say oh man I really love your tats that's so good you know just like hey do you know what I do I interpret tattoos it's kind of like a hobby of mine would you like me to have a shot yeah it's just like it just and and then just over time learning how to weave the gospel into that people being blown away because you're reading their mail, like how do you know that? Oh, I'm like I'm. I'm just learning how to listen to the Spirit of God. He talks to us all the time. We just don't listen to him. Like then that's what I'm doing, and he's saying this about you because he really this. And then all of a sudden you get the chance to bring the gospel in. But the more you can bring it in, the better, I think. Now, that's not to say that because you didn't bring the gospel in, then that was an illegal encounter. Okay. Just like somebody just got healed, that's awesome. Or somebody just got prayed for, that's awesome. You might be just setting up the next Christian who comes along. They might think you're weird, but a nice weird. So that the next Christian who comes up, you have not made it hard for them. You've built a platform for them to come in. And, make, and that might happen two, three, four times before they actually start getting the picture. Okay, number five, healing. Healing is for everybody. I'm just going to say it straight like that. Healing is for everybody. If you want to know how to pray for people for healing, then go and get my book, Rediscovering the Supernatural, um, because there's a whole section on how to pray for the sick. The way you pray for the sick in, in public is exactly how you pray for the sick in private. The way you pray for the sick in the mall is exactly how you pray for the sick in the church service. It's no different. The way you pray for the sick who are not Christian is exactly the same the way that you pray for the sick who are Christian. Now, that's going to be a big challenge for you if you're one of those Christians who takes 10 minutes to pray for somebody. Okay? What I am just said to you just then is that you prayed the wrong way even in the church service. That's not the way you pray. It's not the way Jesus did it. He healed the sick. He didn't pray for them. So stop praying for them. And... Uh, Oh, I'm going to have to just daydream what that's going to look like, you know. Prophecy, once again, prophecy is just an amazing thing. If you want to know how to give a prophetic word to someone down the street, it's exactly the same that you give a prophetic word to somebody in a church service. Exactly the same. Unless, of course, you're one of those people who just are just like, I have a prophetic word for you, thus saith the Lord, the Lord roars from heaven and just, just, 
if that's how you're giving a prophetic word in the church service, um, you, don't come to my church because <laughs> everybody, everybody's going to look at it and say, whoa, what's that? You know, um, learn how to be real and authentic. Can I just open up for Q&A? Because I just finished my little bit. I told you you had to write down questions. Yep. Rediscovering the Supernatural. It's an amazing author. Um, if, uh, uh, if you talk to Peter Gillard in the National Office, he has copies of it. If you don't know how to present the gospel in a meaningful way in 60 seconds, if that is a hard thing for you to do, then there's another book by an amazing author called Here Am I, Send Me. And uh, Peter Gillard also has that book. Um, and in fact, you could, uh, you could get... Yeah, I, so, um, and, uh, and also there is a small group uh, uh, manual for that book, Here Am I, Send Me, um, which is a free download, which is on the CRC website, um, that you can run off for people in your small groups and they can get the book and then they can work their way through it. I would recommend it, um, not because I wrote it, but I just... That's cool. Any, any other questions? Yep. Is there any difference in how we actually discern between what we are naturally and what God is saying is right? So just don't say it's God. Just say, hey, look, I just, I just have this thought comes to me when I look at you. And then I would do what I just did with this lady here, um, Karen. Uh, like, does that... Does that kind of ring true for you? Like, does that make sense to you? Um, and and if it doesn't, like, I'm I'm really cool t- to be. Yeah, I kind of like. <laughs> well, it was an interesting little thought anyway, wasn't it? <laughs> and you're going to go home today, and you just think that guy was really weird. <laughs> but bless you, did you know Jesus loves you? He really does. You know, and you know, just has anyone told you that today? You just so it just doesn't have to be a big deal, Al. I think that's that's a problem for us. We get the word of knowledge and the word of common knowledge. You know, I think I learnt that one off Pete Wabnitz, the word of common knowledge. Um, yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. Yeah. No, the starting point is worship. That's the starting point. And that's why I said that's not the intuitive place. The starting point is worship. The, the starting point is putting an, an album that you really love on your device and getting earphones. That's where it starts. So, and it's just not what you would think. And, and, and like I, as I said, I go around all over the place leading churches into spiritual breakthrough and I know that majority of them they just don't get it that that was the bit if I carry anything it's that bit and because we all think we carry that bit we all think we we're, we're worshipers and it's like maybe worship isn't even the right word. I've I've got to fall nakedly in love I, I've got to become Na- uh, naked is the only word I can think of. I've got to be nakedly intimate with with my saviour. And I can think of no other way to describe that. It's a, it's a holy place. It's a frightening pr- place. Because when you're that vulnerable, 
you're completely bare and you are not in charge of where this goes anymore. Um, so that's kind of where I go. Um, it, uh, what I have found is this, in our church setting, because I was the one who went to that place and then got hungry because I discovered that God doesn't, um, he doesn't feed the peckish, he feeds the hungry. So he taught me to be more and more hungry. And that is not comfortable. And I did not give up, but got progressively more and more starving and ravenous until I will take anything that is given to me, anything. I, it's, I, it, and I'm, all of my religious rules, I, they are no longer on the table. It is completely, I'm now am bare. And because I did that, the church actually gets to come in on my breakthrough. And what was 18 months for me became a few months for somebody else. So, sorry, church leaders, if you're going to break new ground in your church, it's going to cost you more than it's going to cost them. Um, but that's part of the journey, isn't it? It's just like there are the pioneers and then there's the settlers. And pioneers should not give birth to pioneers. Pioneers, if they've done their job right, give birth to a generation that settles. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I will fast. I will fast a few times a year. I will never do it as part of the program. Most of the time, I don't even let the church know I'm doing it. Every now and then, I feel like the whole church needs to come with me. So I will introduce it as a thing. I wrote a little booklet that's on the CRC. Uh, list two, I think it is, a uh, little booklet on fasting um, because much of what's around the place at the mo moment on fasting is all Old Testament uh, in its emphasis and, it's, and it becomes a work or a discipline or a law. It's not a discipline. It's a celebration. The kingdom is about celebration and party. So how does fasting fit in celebration and party? And I've show how actually you can see that so fasting is big for me and part of the whole thing uh, uh, the, the 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 singing worship is really big the praying in tongues of I, I, Pentecostals in general I don't think are spirit filled they they might speak in tongues once a week I think someone who speaks in tongues once a week is not filled with the spirit they're just showing that there was a time that they were. Like, you know, it's just like it's part of that feeding the hunger is just developing the discipline, you know. Get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go walk around your community and just pray in tongues. Just do it for an hour. I do that for four weeks and I guarantee you'll never be able to go walking anywhere again without praying in tongues. It'll just become part of what you do. And, I, and those things are all really, really important. Um, so all of those things that you said, they are all, for me, they are all locked up under that word worship, but I don't want people to hear either or. Oh, no, that's not my deal, you know. 40-day um, fast for me will look like I eat breakfast and that's it for the rest of the, of rest of the day. And I found this one for if you do that fast, that you go to sleep every night ravenously hungry like, because if you have an actual full fast where you're not eating at all, by about day three or so, you actually, your body switches off and you're not hungry anymore. And you, and, and you actually have, by the time you break your fast, you have to tell yourself to break it because it's actually easy. Well, I found that if you're having breakfast every day, 
for 40 days, now you're going to find out what fasting is all about because it's just like, because your body starts to switch off by about day 35. That's when it starts getting used to it, but not until then. Um, that's a good question. I like it. Bill, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I just like, I'm, I'm in that area, Bill, I'm hands off because I can't stop them going down the road and I can't stop them having their relationship with Jesus. So my big deal is to, is to work alongside with them and get them out of that weirdness. Um, you know, and we've had to do that. Uh, like I remember there was a time when uh, a few of our youth guys, they were just like so excited because they went and prayed for a guy who was on crutches down in the mall and he got healed. He was jumping up and down and running in the mall and they were so excited that they saw a, a teenage girl uh, on crutches and they raced at her. Five teenage boys raced at her and the social media went ballistic uh, about it because, of course, we knew about it because she was friends of someone who was friends of someone who actually it came back and we knew it was. So it just gave us the opportunity, listen, guys. So that's how we, we will deal with it one-on-one -on -one like that. Um, but to be honest, I can't stop, if Tim's in my church, I can't stop him going to work and I want him to be a witness and he might not be as good a witness as, as Dan will be, but I... I I just have to, I let it go. So there's a lot of balls that go to the keeper. And um, I just, it's just like, if you're going down the, the mall, you're not going down as part of the church. So we actually have stopped doing church-based, we're going out and hitting the streets. So if, if Dan does do that, then he's just doing that off his own bat. He's just a, a public citizen. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so so we don't we 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 have never even put it in our language to do this as the church. This is what we do in our private witness. Um and uh, it probably doesn't always go well. <laughs> I just don't hear about it. <laughs> I'm going to America. <laughs> Josh Vangie can deal with that one. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? So what I'll, what I'll do is, let, let's say that's you, um, then I'm going to give you, I'll, I will hook you up with somebody who's really great at this, or even myself, and I'll coach you in the service. So it's just like, I don't want you to go and do this. I understand, like mo most of us, even in this room, you'll never talk to someone down at West Lakes. But you know plenty of people at work or in your neighbourhood, your family, so... You don't need to go and talk to the random strangers. There are other people who can do that. But because you're just so unconfident with it, I'll actually just... I'll, so, Steve, could you just come over here? I just want to pray for this guy. No, I'm just saying this is what I would do. I just want to, I just want to pray for this guy. And it's just like... <clears throat> um, so I'll pray for him. Steve, do you have anything? No? Well, I'll actually coach you in... I'll coach you while actually I'm here with Tim. Just like... like, you, like Oh, well, look, I just had this, this stupid picture, but it's just you. No, well, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've had people come and just like, I just got a picture, but I don't know what it means. Well, I'm just like, so you, I have lots of coaching times with people. Um, it's just, but it's just little steps, little steps. 
So you don't have to have a prophetic word. Could you just go and encourage him? Could you have an encouraging word for him? Because the way I read the Bible, the prophecy is encouragement. So maybe you'll step into something prophetic when you didn't even know. All you thought you're doing is encouraging. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, you're standing at the juice bar down at West Lakes, and uh, and and you're with Norm, and you're just getting your juice, and and it's just like, so there's a person at the counter, and it's just like, do you know what my friend Norm does? <laughs> I've had people do this to me. Do you know what my friend Norm does? No, what? He gives encouraging words to random strangers. <laughs> Always the person says, oh, could I have one? It's awesome. It's great. Then Norm's now on the spot. I have, I've done that and seen... Norm standing, not you personally, but I've seen Norm stand, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, where I'm starting to feel embarrassed now. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm just like, when I look at you, I see. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm going to do it. Uh, uh, I did that with a guy down in Melbourne and the guy ended up having a prophetic, like a word for him. And I'm just like, wow, was that encouraging? The guy says, yeah, it really was. He says, now it's my turn. <laughs> and he looked at him. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's just like, it was hilarious. I think he had a, I think the non-Christian had a better word <laughs> than the other. That guy came up to me. This is true, Bill. Last conference, last national conference, he, that guy came up to me. It was six months after that I'd been down at their church doing this. And that guy came up to me, he said, Ian, he said, something broke in me that day and I have never been afraid of people again. And I can't wait all the time. I go up to people, I pray for people, I have witnessed to people, I've shared the gospel with people, I've led people to Christ, I've prayed for sick people and they've got better. I just go for it now, everybody. And there was an evangelist locked in that person. And just like, that was just awesome. Yeah. No more questions? That's good? Beautiful. Let me just pray for you and your churches. God, pour out your spirit on all the family centers. We need, I'm going to come straight back to where we started, God, that this gospel was never meant to be proclaimed outside of a personal encounter with God himself. This gospel was never meant to be embraced without a personal encounter. This gospel was never meant to be lived without a personal gospel, without a personal encounter. And our ministry was never meant to be engaged without it coming from the place of personal encounter. So God, we come back to you. We just, we're not interested in influence so much as we're interested in intimacy with you. We love you, Jesus. Amen.